What up, y'all? Welcome to The Financial Beard. In today's episode, we're gonna talk about how you can drive a brand new car or truck for absolutely free. That's no joke, stay tuned, let's hit it. All right, real fast, guys. If you like this video and you wanna see more content like this, please go ahead and like it. It helps the YouTube algorithm. Uh, my first video is already picking up a, a good bit of steam. So if you do like the video and you wanna see content like that, please hit that like button. Uh, go ahead and subscribe, and here's the video. Okay, quick outline for this video. Basically, pretty simple. We're gonna go over how you do research and you find a vehicle that uh, has low depreciation. And then we're actually gonna go over strategies on how you purchase that vehicle for less than MSRP and even less than invoice. And then the biggest thing here is tax savings. Uh, we're gonna go over how you don't pay taxes on the sale of the car. There's a few different strategies that we'll go over. So make sure you stay tuned until the end and we'll go over that. All right, let's get right into it. So what we wanna do is you wanna do some research and up on the screen, I'm actually gonna show the top 10 least depreciating vehicles. So you can see that the Jeep Wrangler, which is no surprise for whatever reason, the Jeep Wrangler just has very little depreciation. That probably has to do with, you know, there's a really good following with, with Jeeps and outdoors. Wrangler does a really good job. Now the Grand Cherokee and whatnot, those actually plummet quite a bit, so I wouldn't recommend that. But if you're really gonna do this, I would recommend going the Jeep Wrangler out. Uh, you may even, especially if you can get a really good deal on the new vehicle, get below invoice. Uh, if you have a dealer that'll work with you, uh, you'll probably even make money. So Jeep Wrangler, Porsche 911, that's actually a surprise to me, I didn't realize that. Toyota Tacoma, Toyota Tundra, I mean, that makes sense to me. You got the Ford Mustang and, and the Chevy Corvette. The C8s right now, for whatever reason, the C8s, especially through 2020, 2021, 2022, they were like impossible to find. So those right now are actually appreciating, which is just nuts. So. Also, I thought it'd be kind of cool to throw up here the worst depreciating vehicles. So we got the Nissan Leaf. So if you, if you buy a Nissan Leaf, you're gonna take a 65% hit. So I would not recommend that. Uh, no surprise here, the BMW i3. I would not recommend buying a BMW. Uh, if you're a BMW person, that's great. I mean, they're super nice, whatever. Uh, but I actually had a buddy that had one and he was in the shop all the time. Bunch of problems and they're super expensive. So I would not recommend that. Uh, Jaguar, BMW F Series. Look, half this list is BMW, so that's kind of funny. Uh, kind of sad here, the Lincoln Navigator L. I'm honestly probably gonna buy my wife one of those here pretty pretty soon, and it kind of sucks that that's got 57% depreciation. Maybe that's one of those things that if it's a high depreciating car that you want, you may want to consider buying one two or three years old. That way. Uh, you're gonna be better off. But honestly, if you want a new car, the Jeep Wrangler is probably the way to go or a Toyota Tacoma, uh, basically any of those. And then just do your research. This is just the top 10, uh, but try and find something that over a five year period has less than 20%. So that way you're only gonna take a 10% hit, but you're actually not going to. It's actually gonna be for free because this is a good segue into my next section is do not buy your vehicle at MSRP. Now you might be thinking, oh, it's 2022, car prices are going through the roof, blah, blah, blah. No, you can still do this. I just did this. Uh, stay tuned till the end. I'll have a link that pops up. I just bought a brand new Super Duty for, it was like 10% off MSRP, which is crazy because they're selling for $10,000 over MSRP. I was able to invoke a strategy where I talked to the GM, went in there and kind of had all my numbers and was able to get a pretty good deal. Now, as soon as you find the vehicle that you want, so let's just go with a Jeep Wrangler, Okay, so what you wanna do is you wanna go custom order that vehicle and you wanna custom order it with no options. I know this might be hard, especially for me. I love options, I love nice things, but if you really wanna do this and, and have this car app absolutely cost you nothing, you're gonna to wanna to have to go in there and custom order it with no options. Don't go in there and grab one off the lot because it's gonna have five, $10,000 worth of options. You gotta go in there stone cold, and you gotta order with no options. Okay, now you're probably wondering why do I do that? <clears throat> well, on the used car market, everything kind of comes together, okay? So, so th there's like an average uh, vehicle buy and it's all about the auctions, right? right excuse me, the auctions. So basically a car will go to auction and it's all about the average sell price. And that's what everything's based off of. And so you basically get like the medium, all the vehicles out there. So you have vehicles that are like way optioned up where there's like 20, $30,000 in options. And then you have vehicles that are, that are none. And so they're assuming that everything's kind of in the middle. And so if you get a vehicle with no options, it's, it's actually gonna raise your value because all the other cars out there have more options than you. And so you're actually gonna get a better deal on your resale. All right, so as soon as you found a car and you go in, you order it with no options, before you place your order and you sign on the line and, and you put your deposit in, 
Make sure you do your research. Uh, go to Edmunds.com. You can figure out what the invoice price is for that vehicle. Um, for my Super Duty, it was like 6% off invoice, so make sure you get at least 6%. There's also something called holdbacks. And again, I go over this in another video if you want to go more <clears throat> in detail. But essentially, there's another like 4% to work with. So just off of dealer savings, you can get a 10% discount off of MSRP. Now there's even more savings. Um, the last year or so, there hasn't been a lot of this, but there's a lot of manufacturer rebates. Uh, we're going into 2023 right now, and the car market is kind of tanking. So I think in 2023 and 2024, we're going to see a lot of manufacturer rebates. So off the bat, you can get 10% just from the dealer, right? Just from their markup. And then on top of that, you can even get uh, manufacturer rebates. And those are going to vary, you know, a time of year or whatever, but make sure when you go into a dealer, you know the difference between the manufacturer rebates and the dealer discount. So dealer discount, make sure you get about 10%. That, that's going to be a good deal. And then on top of that, um, it could vary. I mean, I know when I was looking at Super Duties, um, you know, in 2019, it was like $4,500 off. Or typically, it's not going to be a percentage. It's going to be um, a number off. Some of the 150s, they'll get like $10,000 off of uh, MSRP just from the manufacturer discount. And then on top of that, you can take the uh, dealer discount as well. So you can see if, if you're able to go in there and, and, and be educated and, and, and pay uh, very little um, for a new vehicle, when you go to sell it in two years, uh, what's gonna happen is you can even make money. Okay, so the next thing, um, th the biggest issue with kind of flipping cars every two years, if you wanna drive a brand new car every few years for free, uh, taxes. Taxes are gonna kill you. Uh, I'm, I'm from Utah, and so I think it's like seven or 8%, it's like 7.25% you pay in sales tax. So there's a few different strategies you can use to not pay the, the sales tax. So please use this. So the first thing is every dealer uh, will do what's called an in and out. So essentially you can go and sell your vehicle for private party. And, and so you find a buyer that wants to buy your vehicle and make sure you're selling it at retail. Don't go in there and be lazy and be like, oh, just give me whatever trade is. Don't ever trade in your vehicle. You're going to get screwed. Please don't do that. So you're going to go sell your vehicle online. We have KSL here. I'm sure there's like Craigslist or cars.com or wherever you're going to sell your vehicle. And what's going to happen is you're going to sell your vehicle at retail. So sell it to somebody at, at the highest retail. You go to NADA, you figure out what the value is and you always make sure you sell it at retail and be patient. Wait two or three weeks. Someone will buy it. I promise you <laughs> somebody will. Um, and what happens is you actually run that transaction through the dealer. Now, the reason you do that is because um, you're actually gonna act as if you're trading that vehicle in for that amount. So you're not doing it at trade-in value, you're doing it at higher retail so that you can get more tax savings. So what, basically what happens is if you trade in that vehicle, AKA you're doing it in and out, <clears throat> um, you're not gonna pay taxes on the difference for that. And so hopefully if playing your cards right to where you're, you're, you're switching out every two years, that vehicle is going to be pretty new and you're going to sell it for just just about if not more than what you paid for and so you shouldn't have any taxes you have to pay uh, the second strategy is if you register that vehicle um, in a state like montana now montana does not charge sales tax for any any other vehicle uh, there's a bunch of companies online that'll do this for you. It's, it's all legit, it's all legal, it's all loopholes, you know what I mean? So the only downside is for the first year, you have to have Montana plates, but after a year, there's companies that'll actually transfer the title then over to the state where you're at. There you go, there's two different ways to save and not pay any taxes on your new vehicle. All right, so even if you don't wanna drive a brand new vehicle for free, honestly, you should implement these strategies anyways, just so that your cost per year on any vehicle you want is gonna go down. So if you're like me, you like nice vehicles, you like a lot of options, um, I implemented this strategy. I may, it'll be interesting to see if Super Duty is there for a while. I mean, they were appreciating, they were doing pretty good, especially with the diesel. I had F-150 that I drove for two years. I ended up buying it. I ended up making, I think it was like $13,000. So I get that was kind of a little bit of an anomaly, right? Because uh, we had COVID, you know, and the car market kind of shot up, but things are kind of leveling off and things are kind of going down. So right now is honestly the time to buy probably used, uh, but you can still buy brand new vehicles at a great price. Okay, so that's basically it. Pretty short, simple video, but again, I want to review. The best thing to do is find a vehicle that's low depreciating Make sure you get a good deal. Do your research. Go in there. Watch my video on how you can pay less than invoice 
on your next vehicle. It's not that it's not that difficult. You do have to go in there and play the dealer game, but go in there educated and make sure that you do your research and you know exactly how much you can get off uh, of a vehicle. And again, good rule of thumb is 10% off M MSRP as a base. And then from there, hopefully there is some manufacturer rebates in the mix to where you can even get a better deal. Uh, and then order a vehicle with no options. The, the, I promise you the salesman's gonna be like, oh, you don't wanna do that, blah, blah, blah. I promise you, if, if you wanna 100%, like you're gonna drive a brand new car for every two years for free, you need to do it at no options because that's gonna give you a bigger upside when you go to flip the car or, or, or trade it in or whatever. And then the biggest thing is tax savings, right? So that's gonna kill you because if taxes is 7%, you know what I mean? If you only have depreciation 10%, well, you're gonna eat 7%, so don't do that. So again, those strategies are pretty simple. Do an in and out, so where you have the tax savings, sell at retail, get the trade-in benefits, and then if you have like a really, really expensive car, you know, over 100 grand, I would look into registering that vehicle in Montana. Uh, again, too, there's no sales tax. The only downside of that is I think their tabs are a little bit more expensive. It's about 500 bucks. Uh, for the year. Uh, but again, too, the companies will kind of take care of everything for you. They will send that title, you just retitle it or whatever in wherever state you're at after a year. So that's the rule is it, it just takes a year and then the next year you just transfer it to wherever you're at. And two, let's let's talk about this real fast. So if you, if you um, I recommend paying cash for vehicles, but I understand everyone can't do that. That's no big deal. So if you are uh, gonna finance it, make sure you're not uh, negotiating your price based on what your payment's gonna be. And, and again, too, please have your payment be relative to whatever your budget is. And again, too, if, if you are gonna finance the vehicle, so let's say the vehicle is 300 bucks a month, that's no big deal. I would recommend doing car share program like Turo. So I would put your car up. You can, you can have it figured out to where, let's say you don't go anywhere on Sundays, right? Or you don't go anywhere on Mondays. You know, set it up to where it's only available on Mondays and then one or two days a week, you know, someone's paying $150, $200 a day to be able to take your car out. And then that's a good strategy to where you could even make quite a bit of money just uh, sharing your car out. Um, but that's what I would do if you're gonna finance the vehicle. Um, I would make sure you're doing something like that so that you're not actually eating into your monthly budget uh, for your vehicle. All right, that's it. Uh, if you like this video, please go ahead and subscribe. If you like this kind of content, um, it, it lets me know uh, to keep producing it. Uh, please subscribe um, and we'll see you in the next one.